Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to create a basic GraphQL API using Nest.js framework. The video is not an introduction to GraphQL, it's rather a guide of Nest.js GraphQL module, so familiarity with GraphQL concepts is required. Ok, without any further ado, let's get started. The Nest.js framework offers two ways of building GraphQL APIs. There is a code-first approach and the schema-first approach. In the code-first approach, you use the TypeScript classes and the curators to generate the corresponding GraphQL schema. In the schema-first approach, the source of truth is the GraphQL SDL file. SDL stands from Schema Definition Language. Personally, I prefer the schema-first way, so I will teach you this method. Ok, we will start from creating a new Nest.js project. Let's open a terminal window in location of your choice and let's type nest new project name. Then you will be asked to pick your package manager. I will go with npm. The installation takes a while, so I will fasten the video now. Ok, the project is set. Now we can delete the generated app controller and app service files. We won't need them. Also, let's not forget to remove the imports inside the app module. Otherwise, the app won't start. To actually start implementing the GraphQL API, we have to install additional packages. When we have the default setup, meaning we're using the Express.js under the Nest.js abstractions, we have no choice and we have to use the Apollo server package. In case we would use the Fastify instead of the Express, we could pick Mercurius package instead of the Apollo server. To install required packages, let's type npm install GraphQL space Apollo server Express. Next, let's install the Nest.js adapters for those packages by typing npm install at nest.js slash graphql and at nest.js slash apollo. Now one more important thing. When using the schema first approach we have to install one more package that is not described in the documentation. We have to install the tsmorph package to support the schema generation. So let's type the npm install tsmorph. Great. Now when we have the required packages installed, we can focus on writing the code. As usual, after installation of any nest module, we have to import it in our application. Let's open the app module file. Inside the imports array, let's add the GraphQL module and let's use its generic method called forRoot. This method expects the config object as the input parameter. Firstly, let's narrow the type to the Apollo driver config. As I said, for the Express HTTP server, we can only pick the Apollo's GraphQL implementation. Next, inside the config object, we have to specify the driver. In our case, obviously, it's just Apollo driver. Both Apollo driver config and Apollo driver types comes from Nest.js Apollo package. After setting the driver, we can set the type paths property. It's an array containing paths to all GraphQL definition files. Nest.js by default supports splitting of SDL files. You can set the path the same way as me, telling the framework to search any path inside the src directory ending with the GraphQL extension. Finally, to set up the GraphQL module, we have to set the definitions property. The definitions are TypeScript objects mapping the GraphQL schema. In the app, we won't create them manually. The framework will create them for us. We only have to specify where it should save them. Let's say we want to have them inside the src directory. We can use the paths and process method to create an absolute path to that file. The definitions by default are created as interfaces. That's not the best if I'm honest. Better to have classes. Then we could extend those classes to create an input validation. So we can set the optional output as flag to be equal to class. Now the types will be generated as TypeScript classes. That's all what we need. Ok, one last note about the config. By default, there is a GraphQL playground available to you. If you would like to, for some reason, disable it, you can set the playground flag to be equal to false. I will leave the playground on, we will use it to test our API. Great, but the config itself is not enough. In any API, we want to create or read some data. Let's imagine some simple case. Suppose we have to create some posts and add comments to that post optionally. Let's create a new nest module and let's call it posts. For that, let's type nest g m o posts inside the terminal window. Then let's type nest g s posts 
to generate a post service. I will remove the generated test file from post directory. Today we won't write any unit tests. Next, let's create a file called posts.graphql. Inside it, we will define the schema for all of our types. Inside the file, let's define two types, post and comment. The post will contain the ID for distinguishing between other posts, the title and the content. It will also contain the array of attached comments. The comment will contain the information about the user who added the comment, text of the comment and the date of the addition. For simplicity, we can set all of those values as the strings. In our app, we would like to have the query for getting all of the posts. So let's define the query type and inside it, let's define the get posts query, returning an array of posts. But before fetching the posts, we have to create some. To do so, let's add a mutation type and add to it the create post mutation. The method will accept the title and the content as the input parameters and it will return created posts. Beside this concrete mutation, we also would like to add comments to the posts. Let's also create the add comment mutation. For this one, I will create one additional type. I will create add comment input for creating a wrapper for all input properties. To create a comment, we have to know the user, post ID and finally the text of the comment. Now I can use this type as the type of the add comment mutation input. The mutation also will return the created comment. That's it. This is the whole schema we need. Now the neat part. Because of the provided GraphQL config, when we start the app server, the framework will generate all classes based on the schema we've just created. Let's see it. Let's type the usual formula. npm run start colon dev. After compilation of the TypeScript, we should see a new file created. Yes, there it is. Let's look inside it. The file contains all generated code. As the top page comment says, don't modify it. Each time the app starts, the schema will be regenerated. If you change something here, it will be lost in the next reboot. Great, now we have the schema defined and all needed classes are generated. The last piece of a GraphQL puzzle is a resolver function. We will create some in the minute, but before so, I would like to implement the post service. We will use this service in our resolver function. As usual, the service will contain the business logic of the app. For simplicity, I won't use any database. Let's create a simple in-memory store. Let's create a class field called posts, holding an array of all created posts. Then the service will implement three methods, get posts, create posts and add comment. The get posts method will be the simplest one. Basically here, we're just returning the content of the posts variable. Next, let's add the create post method. It will require two input parameters, the title and the content. Both are strings. Next, I will add the UUID package for generating the IDs. Each post has to have the unique ID. For that, please type npm install UUID. And then let's add the typings for that package by typing npm install dash d types slash UUID. Okay, now I can import the v4 method from the UUID package. Moving back to the method implementation. In the first line of the method body, let's create a new post object. Then I will push it to the post array and finally I will return it from the method. The last method expects three input parameters, the post ID, the text and the user. In the first line of the method body, we will search for posts to which we would like to add the comment. If one is found, I will create a new comment object, passing to it the text, the user and the current date. Then I will push it to specific posts comments array and finally I will return it from the method. Great, with that implementation of the post service, we're finally ready to add the resolver function. For that, let's create a new file called post resolver. Inside it, I will create a class called posts resolver. Then I will annotate this class with the resolver decorator. The decorator comes from the nest.js slash GraphQL package. This class will be the wrapper for queries and mutation we will add. Typically, you create a resolver map manually. The nest.js GraphQL package, on the other hand, generates a resolver map automatically using the metadata provided by the decorators you use to annotate classes. But to make it work, I have to register this class inside the posts module. I will add it to the providers array 
it's necessary to add it here. Without it, the resolver's map won't be created. Moving back to the resolver file. Let's start from injecting the post service inside the class constructor. The rules here are the same as in case of any other implementation of GraphQL API. The names of a resolver functions must match the names defined in the schema. We have one query called getPosts, so we have to define one method called the same getPosts. Next, we have to annotate it with the query decorator, but be cautious here. Make sure that you are importing it from the nest.js slash GraphQL package. Then, the method logic is pretty simple. Inside the query, we will only return the result of the getPosts method from the post service. Moving forward, there are two mutations left to implement. Let's start from the createPost mutation. Let's copy the name and the input from the schema file and let's fix the typings. Then, like for the query, we have to use the proper decorator. This time, it's called mutation. When using Nest.js framework, you still can access any input parameters from resolver functions. There is access to the root, args, context and the info object. You just have to use proper decorators. Because we're implementing the mutation function, we have to access the input parameters. For that, let's use the args decorator. We can pass the string name of the property we want to access. Having those two input parameters, we can simply call the createPost method of the post service. And that's it. That's the whole logic of the createPost mutation. With the all new knowledge, the implementation of the last mutation is just a formality. Again, let's copy the name from the schema file, to not mistake the name and let's annotate the method with mutation keyword. Then let's again use the args decorator to access the resolver input. We will use the addComment method of the post service. We can unwrap all required properties directly inside the method definition. Then let's simply pass them to the addComment method. And that's it. Great, the resolvers and mutation of our simple app are implemented. There is no more left than testing. Our app runs on the default port, which is 3000. When we open a new browser tab, we can open the GraphQL playground by typing localhost colon 3000 slash GraphQL. Before the lesson, I prepared three queries needed. Let's use them now. When I click the play button, the playground asks me what query I like to invoke. Let's start by creating a post. The mutation returns created post. I will grab the post ID from the response. Next, I will change the post ID in the add comment mutation and then I will use it to create a new comment. Finally, I will use the get posts query to fetch all posts. Yes, once again, it worked as expected. That's it for today. In today's lesson, we have learned how to create a simple GraphQL API using the Nest.js framework. That's a solid foundation for further exploration. Good job! In the next video, we will be still exploring the Nest.js framework. Especially, we will dig into the web sockets, so stay tuned. Meanwhile, thank you for the watching and see you next time.